So welcome back to another video and today it's all about AC coupling and DC coupling your battery system. Now this is one of the decisions you're going to have to make when you're looking to buy a solar system and if you're like me, a visual learner, then this video may be super helpful for you because it's going to show you exactly how these two configurations are wired on actual jobs because we took an alpha one of these g3 10 kilowatt hour batteries and we wired it in ac coupling and then we went to another property where we dc coupled the battery so hopefully everything you need to know is in this video and if this video does help you with that decision then let us know in the comments don't forget to like it let's get into the video Okay, so what is an AC coupled solution? Well, AC coupled basically means that the battery is taking power from the grid or from a solar system in an AC current. It's going into this inverter, but all battery storage is stored in DC. So we need to convert AC to DC. So this inverter does that for us. Now, when we need that power, we need to draw it out of this DC cell and we need to convert it back to AC to power our home. Now we do this via the inverter at the top. So this alpha battery has got sort of a dual purpose. It can convert energy from AC to DC, but it can also convert energy from DC to AC. So what applications would you have an AC coupled solution? Well, if you had a battery only system in your property, so you've got no PV, you're just using the battery to charge up overnight, buy cheap energy and run your house with it in the day, then you'd have an AC coupled battery solution. Now also you can have an AC coupled solution if you've got a separate solar system. So if you've got a solar system with either micro inverters or a separate string inverter, any power that goes into the battery is going to be AC and therefore it needs to be AC coupled to get converted into DC for storage. So how do you actually wire up an AC coupled solution? Well, from the battery perspective, it's actually pretty straightforward because all we need going into here is an AC power supply. Now on this property, we've got a six mil armored cable coming from our incoming mains, tracking around the property, coming up here, and this goes into our battery isolator. So if we need to isolate our battery, all we do is turn that off there and it's super simple to operate. From here, this armoured cable then goes into our battery and that is what is going to power the AC side of this inverter. I'm going to show you inside here in a second, but there's one more cable just to take a quick look at. And that is the communication link and that runs just down here. So with our AC power supply, we've also run this little Cat5 cable. And what this does is it's a communication link back to something called a DTSU. This is the meter that's got its eyes watching the grid and the solar system if you have one. Let's go and take a look at that now before I show you that wiring. And this is that actual meter here. So this is the DTSU, as you can see, DTSU. Now this has got that comm cable plugging straight into the top and what this has is little CT clamps that go around our grid and go around our solar system and these are current transformers so they are reading the power going through this cable, feeding that information back to the DTSU and that's what's giving the battery's BMS system all the information it needs to make the appropriate decisions. Now in terms of powering this battery, what we do is take the supply as soon as it comes into the property because we want to be able to manage that import and export from the battery. And that's done via these. These are Henley blocks. So these are high power connector blocks essentially. We've got a live and we've got a neutral here. They loop down and then they reappear in this little consumer unit here. And this is what's powering this consumer unit, this buzz bar. Now, out of there, we then have our power, which is these two, dropping down in that armoured cable underneath down here and right round to our battery. So that's what's supplying the battery in this property. Okay, so we're back at our battery. Now that AC power cable goes into that isolator. That isolator then needs to power this battery. 
So behind this little cover here are where all the connections are done on this Alpha ESS G3 battery. And this is our AC power. So this is supplying power in to the battery. That is gonna charge up overnight, fill up that DC storage, and when we need it, it's then gonna send that power back down this line and power the home. So it's a two-way street for this cable on this AC coupled solution. Now also in here, we have that cable which is talking to that meter and that goes into this connection here. So that meter is watching the grid, but in actually in this case, it's also watching the solar because we've got an AC coupled solar solution via those REA Fusion 2 microinverters on the actual roof. And that DTSU unit is gonna be look. <laughs> And that DTSU unit has got those little CT clamps. One's gonna go around the solar production and the other one around the grid. And that gives this information back to this BMS system. And it's telling this battery what's going on. But what it's also doing is watching this independent AC coupled solar array. And it's gonna manage this two way street because any power that was going back down the grid that was gonna be exported, the battery can now activate this inverter, send that power up this two-way street and fill up those DC cells. And when we need that power, this two-way street then will power the home. So it's a really flexible solution. And where this AC couple side comes into it is if the home is pulling more than the rated power of this inverter, then what we can do is supply up to five kilowatt from this five kilowatt model, and we could do up to three and a half from our roof separately. Okay, so now we know how an AC coupled battery works, what are the actual benefits and why would you choose it for your solar system? Well, on this property here, we've got an AC coupled Alpha five kilowatt battery with a 10.1 kilowatt hour storage cell. Now this home has AC coupled solar, so it's got microinverters on the roof and the total power of that system is like three and a half kilowatt. So combined, we've got an eight and a half kilowatt of instantaneous power from our two generators, because this is generating and the roof is also generating power for our home. Now this is relevant because as our homes become more electrified and our demand increases, having that instantaneous additional power stops you from requiring energy from the grid. And where it can also pay is when it comes to export. So when you have a solar system or a battery system, you'll be enrolled into something called SEG. This is Smart Export Guarantee. Now, because you've got such a powerful system when you've got it AC coupled, if the grid is paying a particularly high rate, then you can dump all your power into the grid from the battery, but also from the solar as well. So you can earn more from your system. And there are other benefits as well, because you've got redundancy. If your solar system fails, there's a problem with a power connection or one of the panels or whatever's going on, then we can still power our home from the battery. Whereas if we were using a hybrid solution and the power ran through the actual inverter, if the inverter had a fault, then we'd lose the entire system. So it does provide a level of redundancy. There are also safety benefits as well, because the way we've configured this system, we've got no high voltage DC coming off the roof tracking around the property and dropping into this inverter. Now, DC generally isn't a problem if it's been done right by trained and qualified engineers like the guys that are on site here today. But having an AC coupled solution means that all our power connections are all done with RCD protection. So if there ever was a fault, like a rodent starts chewing for a cable or something, we're not gonna have any issues with arcing because we've got the safety of AC. So obviously they were all the positives, but let's also talk about some of the negatives or some of the considerations when you're thinking about having an AC coupled solution. Now, one of them is getting approved for all that power. So when you've got these two separate generators, when you're doing something called the G99, this is an application to your local grid to say, can we have this system? Generally, they get a little bit nervous when you say we want to have a battery system rated at like five kilowatt and we want a PV system rated at four or five kilowatt as well, because that's a lot of power going through the grid. 
and they don't always approve of it. So you might apply for an AC coupled system, but they might come back and say, look, realistically where you are, you can only have five kilowatt and you might need to revert to a hybrid. And the final consideration is cost because when you have an AC coupled solution, you've got a lot more hardware to buy and it's a more complex install. You've got an AC wiring configuration for your battery. You've then got an AC wiring configuration for your solar system. You've got an inverter in this battery system, in this Alpha G3 that you're really only using to convert AC to DC. You're not using the hybrid functionality and you've got an inverter underneath every panel. So there are cost implications, but it's like anything. If you want the best system, you've got to pay good money for it, but there are plenty of benefits to go in AC for your solar and battery system. Now, DC systems are different. So DC is direct current. AC, like this cable here, this twin and earth, that's alternating current. Now, where it's different when it comes to solar installs is straight from the panels from our roof, we don't have microinverters. They're all linked together and they drop down in two cables and it's polarity based. So we've got positive and we've got negative. They will drop straight into this battery. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Now it's not only the current that's different when it comes to AC and DC, but the cables are also different as well. So now this is DC cable, this is four mil, and it's a stranded cable, but there's obviously only one core in middle of here because you're gonna have one for positive, one for negative. This is sort of got quite a tough shielding on it. One of the risks with DC is that DC can arc. So if you had a positive and a negative, like a car battery, and they touch each other, you get arcing, you get sparks and you get fire. So this is a quite a heavily insulated cable. And obviously it's imperative that when you terminate this, when you put the actual connectors on, that you make a good job of it. You're teasing you. <laughs> teasing you. Yes. Tease me. <laughs> right, ready? Yeah. <laughs> now, AC cable is a little bit different because you can still get AC cable in singles as if that would be there and you can get like a four mil single, but it is different in the sense of it usually comes in something like this, which is twin and earth. Now, what you've got here is you've got a live cable, a neutral, but you've also got an earth. Now, the difference between that compared to DC is that is polarity based. And that obviously is alive and neutral, so it's not polarity, it's not positive or negative. And you've also got an earth, so if you have a fault, if you have a problem, you can route that fault to earth and stop any issues. With DC, if you get a fault, you can't isolate it, you can't send it to earth. So you've got to be really careful with DC systems. Now, when it comes to wiring your DC cables into your inverter, this is where it gets different from AC. So previously we looked at that AC connection and it essentially was not that one. Previously, we looked at that AC connection and it went on to this here. So it does live, neutral and earth. That simply plugs into our inverter and that's what takes power from the grid or the home, charges up the battery and discharges it to the home. So very simple, very straightforward. DC is a little bit more complex because like we said, it's polarity based. And when it comes to wiring, you need these. These are MC4s. So there's a male and there's a female version. These are our DC cables off the roof. Now, I've split them out like this because we've got a two string system. So this alpha battery can accept two strings, two circuits essentially. And the cables are positive and negative. They're polarity based. So this is eight panels and this is eight panels. Now, when it comes to wiring this into the inverter, there are respective female and male connectors. So we would cut that cable, strip it back, terminate that on and crimp it with a special tool that crimps these cables to this connector because DC is, like I said before, it can arc. If you touch the polarity, so if you touch positive with negative, it will arc and it will keep arcing until you separate them. So these are fully double insulated. They're designed that technically two of these could go near each other and it shouldn't arc. It's never advised, you should always keep them separate. So in a minute, what we're gonna do is chop these cables, get these on, and we'll show you plugging them into the inverter. Perfectly terminated, stuffing gland is nice and tight, and that is our AC connection. And in terms of connecting it, this is how complex it is. Done. 
So, which one do you pick? Because you've got all these choices and how do you make a decision? Well, fundamentally, it sort of comes down to budget. For me, personally, having an AC coupled system is the preferential solution and that's because we've got a separate solar system that's producing ac power so if you use like micro inverters you've got dc panels converting to ac locally and we've got an ac power line coming off the roof supplying our property when we've got an ac coupled battery what we've then got is a separate power source also combining to power the home so if you've got particularly high loads then having an AC coupled system can mean that you deliver more power into the property. Now, the reason for that is on a hybrid solution, you're always limited by the total inverter rating. So let's look at something like this Alpha G3. This is the five kilowatt version. Because the inverter is doing all the conversion, it's converting DC off the roof to AC for the home, or it's allowing DC to go into the battery. If our home power envelope exceeds five kilowatt, then this inverter is going to need the grid to supplement that load. Now, that's pretty rare. You know, if your home was pulling five kilowatt continuous all day, you'd have a pretty heavy energy bill. However, there is another benefit of having an AC coupled system, especially with micro inverters, and that is safety. Obviously, when you have a micro inverter system, you're converting DC to AC locally on the roof and all the cables tracking down potentially through your property have a live neutral and an earth. So if we have a fault, then we can discharge that fault to earth. But it's not all doom and gloom for DC systems because these are very efficient. When you think about producing energy in a DC current from your solar panels, that comes down from the roof in DC cabling and can drop straight into our battery cell without being converted because battery energy is stored in DC current, it can't be stored in AC. When we charge our battery from the grid, we still have that challenge of com multiple conversions because we've got AC coming in on its off-peak low-rate tariffs, converted to DC, and when our home needs it, we convert DC back to AC to use it in our home. So conversions are sort of inevitable. You can't avoid them. However, you do minimize them on a hybrid system. So to summarize this, which one would I choose? Personally, if I had the budget, I would go for an AC coupled battery with an AC solar system. If I didn't have the budget, then I will be spending on high quality equipment like this Alpha G3 or a Tesla Powerwall 3. So there you have it, a comparison between AC coupling and DC coupling solar systems. Now, we want to know which one you prefer, what would you choose for your solar system, so leave a comment below, and don't forget, like the video. Send it down our two-way street, we charge up those... Okay. Ah, oh, ready? I forgot what I was saying. <laughs>